Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Iori Folani alongside um, Asukwa James. And, um, good, morning. good morning, Nigeria. Indeed. It's, it's a wet morning in Lagos. Not that it's been raining that heavily, mm -hmm. but still, the apprehension in Lagos, southwest of the country where we're broadcasting from, is that just let a few drops fall and everybody begins to say, oh, Lord, please, please. Lord, take control. <laughs> but it doesn't look like we're, we're going to be experiencing those floods if it doesn't pick up a bit. Anyhow, onto the business. The, 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 the social media and, uh, and other news outlets were flooded yesterday with the sensational news that um, uh, the EFCC acting chair, uh, Ibrahim Magu, had been arrested. But very, very shortly after that, an explanation came through that that indeed was not the case. That came from the presidency. And um, uh, there's the president uh, advisory committee uh, on anti-corruption, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they actually, you know, it transpired that, you know, he had been invited. And I think uh, I read in somewhere there that, look, they themselves had, have spoken now that the people that were, you know, that had the assignment to invite him for some interesting, maybe mischievous reason, had decided to go, you know, uh, with, with, with a team. And um, so that gave the impression of arrest, but they wanted to be sure to say that he had not been arrested. Nevertheless, he was diverted from his intended itinerary. Mm -hmm. He reportedly was on the way to somewhere else yes, when he was force headquarters. Force headquarters uh, and, and then if interceptors is the right word, we hear that that happened to him mm -hmm. and he found himself uh, in the presidential villa. Uh, the wing. And, and he was there all through the night. He was there all through so the night. which grammar do we use? Do we use he was detained all through the night or he uh, was he, just... Uh, but he, he, uh, well, usually, he's a policeman, right? Yes. Uh, usually we hear about people helping the police with their inquiries. Mm. So no doubt he was he helping the committee with whatever their inquiries were, mm. right? You know, well, if, if you look at this um, old matter, whether he was arrested mm -hmm. or he was not arrested mm -hmm. is not the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, if was invited mm -hmm. in quotes you know for him to appear before a panel now. never mind the quotes yes if okay, he was yeah. invited if he, if he was invited by a panel yes. or whoever is invited for by a panel yeah. has to be given notice yes so first mr magu we, we are inviting you to come for this panel on mm. so so time and so, mm. so so if he doesn't come mm -hmm. i think the the honorable thing to do which i which many people will say mm -hmm. is We've invited you, you didn't come. Maybe they will have to look With for a, an, a, a warrant, mm. you know, of his arrest um, or something. But well, not well, that they will now, well, in a commando style, well, you know, okay. block him mm. from going to wherever uh, I wanted to go to. Okay, I hear you. Uh, again, perhaps you might consider that... Um, with the authorities, there are different categories or different degrees of invitation. Uh, but the important thing is we have to take what was told us, which is that he was invited. And I think I read somewhere that it was, it was, it was added that he was not compelled. He was invited. So taking all of that, we just have to take it for what it is. There are different degrees of a, invitation. Okay. But whatever, whether it was but, invitation or whether it was uh, com, uh, on, uh, whether it went there voluntarily, the important thing is that they needed his attention. And now this takes us back to uh, June last month. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General and Minister of Information, uh, you know, did a memo to the president, mm. which um, is shall we say, the origin of all of this. And um, I guess that's where we are, really, because um, the acting chair of the EFCC was uh, accused of um, quite grievous, um, I don't know, is it misdemeanor? Is it offenses? But Sha, he had a case to answer. And that's coming from the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, who many people might not realize instantly, uh, that's the supervisory authority for the EFCC. Mm. And uh, the point is made that, um, therefore, when the police, uh, when the president gets a memo from the head of the supervisory uh, agency for the EFCC, he doesn't really have much wiggle room in terms of whether to take it seriously or not. What do you think? Well, I, um, I look at this matter in so many ways. You know, one, Ibrahim Magu has been there since 2015. Yes, in an acting capacity. You know, uh, acting capacity. And if the president, if the presidency had wanted him to stay for as as full time, um, EFCC um, chairman, they should have done that. No, no, but twice, you know the presidency twice, can't do it alone. You know, yeah, well, the national assembly twice, declined twice to cooperate. His name was taken to the national assembly, mm. and it was rejected. Yes, you know, 
And so, no, if, so sorry, add, add the fact that now that it would appear that the National Assembly you know, might be well disposed to approving exactly. so no more presentation exactly. of so the name. Exactly. So what happened at, the, at this point? Why didn't they send his name there so that he will be confirmed and, and he will be made the, the uh, full-time chairman of the FCC? So there's but, a, but let's go back to June. Yes. You know, there were so many allegations against him by the AGF. Mm -hmm. One was alleged discrepancy in the reconciliation records of the EFCC and the Ministry of Finance on recovered funds. That is what he declared and what he yes, actually deposited. exactly, like declaration of mm -hmm. 539 billion mm -hmm. as recovered funds instead of 504 billion. No, 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 so, sorry, sir. The, the point there, he declared a figure, Yes. right? And then he deposited more than the figure. Exactly. That had, so it's not less, it's more, more than the figure he had declared. Yes, so exactly. That, that gave is, the Attorney General cause for concern. Yes, then there's another because one. Because it now goes back to how transparent are you Insubordination. Then there's the whole big one of insubordination. It's insubordination. And you can define that but, anyhow But if you, you look want. at all the allegations, sure. I want to play the devil's advocate here. <laughs> you know. If you look at all the, uh, all the allegations, they are simple allegations that the Attorney General of the Federation is supposed to either send queries or... Like this one about the account, all you need to do is, okay, I've noticed that you had, you've deposited X amount of money as claimed in your books that it was less. You send an audit firm to do the audit of the EFCC. Okay. Perhaps it might be somebody somewhere in the EFCC that didn't, uh, didn't actually notice one or two things. All so right. the audit firm would have done that. Then you send queries where you have... You, you claim he was, he, he was um, insubordinate to you. Which, which brings us to the other big issue, the big elephant in the room uh, on this topic, uh, uh, which is about power blocks contesting for dominance in relation to this particular matter. Mm. And that's where we bring in our expert commentators uh, to you know, give us their illumination on the matter and uh, what they think and so we'll sort of match it because nobody knows very much as a more fact mm -hmm. if we did it wouldn't be this big an issue all this confusion was he arrested no he wasn't arrested uh now that he's been there he's been there right through the night like uh, so, so many people are saying there's so, somebody drumming and that is why somebody's dancing outside. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of them known uh figures in the anti um, um, corruption you know uh, world in nigeria especially in terms of NGOs and um, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Debo, I didn't know later on, but uh, in the meantime, we have uh, Mr. Larry Suraj, who is chair of a civil, uh, civil Society Network uh, Against Corruption. Against corruption. Uh, thank you very much, Larry, for making time to speak with us this morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Yuri, for Larry and for having me. Good in morning. Indeed. I'm here alongside uh, Asukwa James. Uh, give me your read of the um, situation that the head of the ESCC finds himself in. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been, I, I think it's more of the situation that the federal government of Nigeria has just find itself in, rather than... The head of the ESCC, beyond the fact that he's the poster boy also for this government in his own anti-corruption successes and uh, achievements, uh, is also the fact that the institution of the ESCC is being dragged into this un unfortunate milieu uh, that uh, I, I listened to the, your prologue, you know, um, about what is between the office of the Attorney General uh, and the EFCC. It, it is rather unfortunate that what would have ordinarily been an administrative panel is uh, being converted to a prosecutorial mm -hmm. panel. Um, the allegations of the um, Office of the Attorney General, like uh, Asukwa James said, shouldn't have been more than just a mere query uh, to the EFCC chairman. Uh, the report of such query, if not satisfactory, mm -hmm. is what then would go to the president uh, for what they call either wow. investigation or to the other law enforcement agencies. Uh, but what you have seen is just the political gerrymandering of... Um, some of the elements that we can say that are genuinely committed to the issues of anti-corruption. And that is the clear when you look at the antecedents and the relationship uh, between the Office of the Attorney General and some of the activities of the EFCC in terms of prosecuting 
um, uh, uh, many of the cases and political cases by virtue of the ones that have been withdrawn from court before now by the um, attorney general where he has entered nolly prosecute on this case. And it is important uh, that we put it in perspective. It is even worse for the government to say, oh, no, we have not arrested him. We have only just invited him. Uh, it's better to have said that he's been arrested and uh, the world will know that this is actually a completely disorganized government uh, than saying that he is actually being um, invited in such a gestapo manner uh, and he was not also released uh, to go back to the office yesterday. So mm -hmm. this is not just an administrative investigation. Uh, this is more of um, a prosecutorial one. And like, uh, as uh, so, sorry, uh, Larry, uh, as you got to the whole matter of um, saying this, the kind of investigation that it is, initial reports indicated that uh, the secret uh, secretary, uh, 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 no, 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 um, uh, the chief of staff, chief of staff okay. the chief of staff to the president, uh, Professor Gambari, will be heading it up. But then the latest we're hearing now that it is uh, retired Justice Ayo Salami. Uh, and others. I, I, it's not entirely clear. Is it the chief of staff heading this up? Is it the um, uh, 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 retired uh, Justice uh, Ayo Salami? You know, it's not clear because you see retired Justice Salami and others. So, I, I mean, who is heading? Who is heading up? Uh, that area is not clear. And is it significant who indeed is heading this panel? Is that is part of the failure on the part of this government. You would, you would agree that there's not even been a single statement from the government on what is happening. I mean, they, we don't even know about the panel. Even if Magu is said to have known about it, Nigerians don't know about it. You have allowed for rumors well, to just Well, well when you say there's not been a single statement, um, I think I saw a tweet, a tweet by the uh, president's man on uh, new media yesterday. Uh, confirming that uh, uh, the uh, EFTC chair was not under arrest. I mean, uh, yeah, that is about not being under arrest. The DSS also issued statement mm -hmm. saying he has not been arrested by the DSS. But there's been no statement on what is happening. Okay. Who is investigating? Who is heading the panel? What are you doing? And, and what are the charges? And then from there, either trust or rely on what will be the outcome. Nigerians also have the right to decide if there's going to be fair treatment or fair investigation and what is also transpiring. It requires a whole lot uh, from not only the government and the presidency, even for the panel, because now people will start doubting the integrity and uh, impartiality of the panel with some of the things that has happened well, um, it... yesterday with the trend at which things are going. Uh, it is already creating a very bad, you know, image for the panel. Mm -hmm. And Nigerians they actually deserve to know what are behind those allegations. The allegations deserve to be investigated. It is either going to vindicate Magu or it's going to indict him. But whichever way it goes, Nigerians need to know if the anti-corruption fight of this government, um, almost led by Magu, in a chariot, or it is actually been also compromised to the extent of the benefit to the chairman. Okay. And that is only when all Nigerians and the international community, mm -hmm. government and all... Very important. I, 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 and I think it's an indication of the seriousness with which Magu himself takes this whole affair, uh, that he was joined by his lawyer, we read, uh, as soon as he arrived the uh, panel uh, venue. He didn't just go there. He, he sort of knew that... This was not a thing that you just jauntily walk across to. Uh, you, you go prepared. So uh, his lawyer, an SAN. Uh, yes, uh, Rotimi Jacobs. Rotimi Jacobs uh, was actually there with him. Uh, I don't know. The indication is that um, we've just begun this, and it might indeed um, expand into something more than this. So you, he needed to have an advisor, a legal advisor in the place. Right. I, I don't know the effect of uh, what a lawyer there would have been. Uh, would a lawyer have been saying, um, uh, sorry, that question, you know, my client doesn't need to answer. I don't know. But he was there the with a lawyer. The circumstances of the arrest actually made for, for or, or the invitation made for the need of a lawyer. Under normal circumstances, there shouldn't have been any basis for a lawyer, uh, for a CEO to be invited to meet with an administrative panel. With the circumstances that he was also invited, 
there's no likelihood that he would have any document to back any of his assertions or even claims before the panel. So it is obvious that this is more or less like very simple for people like him or someone that is at the center. Oh, this looks more like a persecution. If I've not been given an opportunity to prepare myself, you know, um, to come around, then yeah. there's a need to actually have... Uh, yeah, I, I guess yeah. that's a very important point. If he was indeed, uh, as we have been, uh, as has been reported, on his way to police headquarters, mm -hmm. a totally different uh, kettle of fish, and had been um, ahem, uh, ahem, uh, persuaded to divert, you know, and come into the presidential villa for a totally uh, different uh, setup. Uh, let me ask you, Larry, what do you think, what light do you think this casts on um, our the President Buhari's fight against corruption. President Buhari uh, would be seen as a man, you know, who is very serious about the anti-corruption war. Uh, EFCC, you know, arguably, uh, you use the, use the term yourself, has been the poster boy in particular, and his chairman, has been the poster boy for that aspect of President Buhari's, um, um, you know, uh, operations. Uh, what light do you think this, show, uh, this throws on our anti-corruption stance? As, as, as is, is the usual thing with this government, it, it's just um, a credibility squandered. Uh, the fact that the president set up a panel to investigate all those allegations would have been a major plus for the government and for the anti-corruption to clearly show that we don't or there's no sacred cow in the fight against corruption by this government. And that would have earned not only accolades locally, but also at the international level. But the process of managing that, and I think, I want to assume that there's the intention, uh, the good intention, especially with the caliber of the chairman of that party. That good intention of the president was I judged by quite a number of characters that have not successfully and genuinely represent this government. But I entrenched in the government. They hijacked that process and constituted not only nuisance uh, to the government, but also an embarrassment to the government, both locally and internationally. But this is actually a very bad moment, uh, and it is not going to be the government any good at all with the way that it's managed. Okay, so the, talking about um, genuity, so how genuine do you think um, and how fair will the panel be? Because if you look at what um, the, the, uh, the petition or memo sent by Malami the last time, he even listed some replacements for Magu. You know, that's an interesting point. You know, which I, I'm, is, I'm, I'm which sure so many people are also saying, okay, it's like a fake accomplice for him already. Okay, Larry will want to comment on that, no doubt. But for the moment, we've lost him. And what okay. is an, it's a very important point that you bring up, um, that... Uh, uh, the uh, Attorney General's memo of June, June. Was, was said to have contained a short list of no, three of, possible of three, replacements. Exactly. So it means that the Attorney General's mind is made up. Already. Already that this man is out. Uh, okay, uh, Larry, uh, I suppose okay. he's okay. back. Larry, you're back, right? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. So I, I was asking, even with this panel... Yes. Even with this panel, in June, the Attorney General had already, you know, gone ahead to the shop, um, shop um, lists. You know, he has already brought that list for replacement of Magu, you know. So, what, what, what is now the essence of even the panel? Because already it's like the, it's a fait accompli already for, for the Attorney General. The, 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 the other thing there is, is that this is not a panel that was actually set up by the office of the attorney general. So if it is set up by the office of the chief of staff or by the president himself, then it means that there's still some opportunity uh, for Magu uh, and also for Nigeria to get, you know, uh, a measure of either justice uh, or fair hearing or fairness from that process. Uh, mm -hmm. But what is obvious was that the memo, which deliberately was leaked to the press, this mm -hmm. was supposed to be a confidential memo mm -hmm. to the president. But obviously because the author of the memo and all those characters behind the author and the memo didn't get the initial or the anticipated response from the president, then decided to leak it to the press. 
and leaking it to the press, compel the president or the office of the chief of staff. Remember, the former chief of staff, uh, late Abakiari, was almost part of um, that clique that was never in support of Mago. Uh, and with the uh, okay, we, we'll come to that, uh, Larry. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. We'll come to that and um, the speculation that this is power blocks uh, within the presidency uh, at play. Uh, we'll come to that specula that particular speculation uh, later on. But in the meantime, Mazi Okora for good morning. Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning. Good morning. Sayori, you see, let's, let's go back to history. You know, in this year program, when uh, Chief of Staff entered the office, you brought that topic when he said, he said to serve the president. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, you read this. Fine. Now, what is, doing, what is happening now is what he has come to do. Now, you ask yourself, there were stories about that from Obasanjo's regime in Abia State, where I'm coming from, about the past governors from Obasanjo regime to president, that pensioners, their money has not been paid. My father, they are owing him up to 29 uh, months. He has not been paid. My elder sister, 27. My elder brother, how many? 17. The wife, how many? Nine months. Now you ask yourself, where is the money? But when the people there wrote to Magu's office for them, all this is where the, in the newspaper, at least you saw it. All the newspaper, they were planning in there, in there. And what happened? At the end of the day, everything just happened. You know how many people have gone to the early grave because they are not receiving. The money were there. Now where are the money? People are seeing the objects. Everybody has seen the COVID-19, what is happening now. What, what is happening is that there is a proverb which says, as you are sitting that day in that studio right now, Mr. Yuri, everybody has some ticket and you have two bags. One bag in front of you, one bag behind you. The bag in front of you, you are pointing at other people. The one behind you is your own. Now, when your own comes out, what do you do? You see that, uh, what do you, to me, as a human being, I will tell that uh, let him throw his towel and step aside. Because what is happening now in Nigeria, that, look, Nigeria has gone nuclear. Nigeria has gone digital. You, 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 would, you, 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 you would advise, you, you would advise the acting they, chairman to step yes, aside. Yes, let him step aside. In the circumstances. Thank you very much uh, yes. for calling in, Mazio Koroako. Um, well, uh, Larry, your reaction? Yeah, I, 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 for me personally, I think at this point, um, it is going to be actually most honorable, really, uh, for the acting chairman to actually resign from office. Uh, he has actually done more than enough for the, um, the government, uh, for the country, and also for the ESCC. Uh, it is obvious that the government really is not standing by its own mm -hmm. sufficiently, or the others in government that are up against the fight against corruption are already winning. And people like him are actually going to be sacrificed. Uh, they are actually going to be victims of the system. And they would go um, without their integrity. So if you ask me, I completely agree. But, but the, president, point, the, uh, the president has the final say, because after all said and done, this is a report that will be presented to the president. And I'm going to imagine that the president set up the panel in the first place uh, because he wanted fairness mm -hmm. in, in this whole matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how much of an option Magu has to resign uh, because his integrity is involved in all of this. And um, I don't know if he has the option of rolling over and dying, so to speak, or if he has to fight this, especially if he believes in the... Uh, uh, in, in the cleanliness of his hands, because um, I think all the all of it, apart from the discipline aspect, they're also trying to, you know, where well, the questions will yeah, be seeking if, clarification yeah, on whether or not you, he if, was clean. If by now those behind his um, staged arrest and embarrassment, uh, either in the police force, the uh, presidential villa, or the DSS, are not under interrogation and also sanctioned by the presidency, then this, there's no presidency that is um, worthy of results there. The fact that that can, can happen, and then people will get away with it, and the heads are not rolling, then there's nothing actually to stake for. And I think Okay, one moment, Larry. Let me bring in right Femi up. in Surulere. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uh, uh, good morning to you, Yuri, and uh, your friend. Good. Thank you. Good yeah, this drama that is unfolding has been there for a long time. The people who chose us exactly what is happening in the, in the Castle Rock, 
of the president. The major people around the president that are in confidence, they are not disposed to uh, Mark no. being there. And they have been working on removing him for a long time. It's not a new thing. When you look at Malami, it is still the same Malami that wrote to the president that there is no case for Don Echete and all the rest. So he has been the arrowhead of corruption in the other Asso Rock. Mm, that, is, that is an allegation. Well, well you see, that's a, that's a big no, problem because I've also, I tell me, that's a big problem, isn't it? it? Because he's, he's in, the, in the administration of President Wait, Buhari. It is in the open. It is in the open. This is being close to the, that. The Manabu case, there is no case for all those who are involved. Up now, they are now charging some of them in Nigeria. That means that this man is working against the agenda of the president. They have not been very comfortable with Mangu being there. They have done everything of their best. Okay, th thank you very much, Femi. Thank I'm going to have to thank you for calling in, but I'm going to have to say also personally that, um, that that's a very, very, very confusing comment because um, every everybody, every minister uh, must be working according to the agenda of the president. Mm -hmm. You can't have any minister working against the president. And Femi, you're not the only one. I mean, I've also read commentary. Uh, suggesting that uh, the Attorney General might not be putting all of his eggs in the presidential basket of anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they're making that uh, kind of a statement yeah, because no, the President wouldn't stand for it for a second. No, is my I yes, now, because if you look at it... Oh, Femi is still on. I can, give you, I can give you very, very five instances. Okay, Larry. That would be yes. That the Attorney General is not in tandem with the anti-corruption uh, effort of the government. If you look at the Malabu case uh, that is ongoing on the OPL 245, uh, the first memo that was leaked to the public between the Attorney General of the Federation and the President was to the effect that that case does not have merit and that Malabu should suspend further investigation and prosecution on that matter and that the President should actually direct Malabu. And that is one of the cases of insubordination that the Attorney General mentioned. But unfortunately, the President gave the EFCC, he overrides the position of the Attorney General and gave the EFCC to go ahead in that matter. So as we speak, Nigeria has recovered $78 million uh, in that case through the office of the Attorney General. Nigeria is prosecuting that case and requesting for $801 million against JP Morgan Chase Bank in London Nigeria is asking for about $1.8 billion in the Italian court. In that particular case, where the Attorney General actually told the EFCs and put it in writing. And what happened with that letter that the Attorney General wrote uh, to the President on that matter? That letter found its way to the hands of the lawyer to um, the former Attorney General, um, Adoki. And that letter was used in court. That was a memo between the Attorney General and the President. And that letter found its way to the hands of the lawyer, used in court by that lawyer, saying the Attorney General said there is no case in this matter. Okay, one Nothing moment, please. Uh, uh, Reverend Dominic in Alimosho. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Yori. How are you? Thank you very much, Dominic, for calling Good morning to your colleague there. Indeed. Good, good morning, morning, Reverend. Yori, I am not surprised of what is happening now. If you can hear me loud and clear. We can. Uh -huh. I am not surprised. If you know the antecedent, how this man has come into this office as acting chairman, he breaks every known, known protocol that somebody will be acting for over three years now. And last time they sent names of even the battle between the business letter and confirmation. They gave to Mr. President and give another one to the National Assembly how it happened. Those men and women, maybe, I say maybe, who did not want Margaret to become the chairman are still in power. Number two, if we have one government, one conscience, one purpose, what is happening now is totally confusing. Okay. Uh, is uh, Reverend, I, I, thank you very much. I'm sorry. 
thank you you got those two points out i'm gonna to have to let go of you now because of time constraints uh larry as well your, your concluding comments uh interesting uh that um uh, mazio okora for started it and you said you agree uh, magu might well be advised to step aside if if he has that option no, that, that, is, that, that for me is the honorable thing. Unfortunately, it, is, it would allow him to get out of the office and then also prove his innocence and also retain his integrity. I was one of those that have actually, earlier before now, insisted that he should stay on to show to Nigerians and also uh, to his detractors that he has the presidential support uh, and that he's also able to uh, continue in office as the EFCC chairman and sustain the achievement. But after the experience of between yesterday and now, I think it is already a situation where the president is losing his grip on the government. Uh, quite a number well, of genuine well, people I don't know. in the government. I don't know if we can make that assumption, but I understand you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Larry Suraj, uh, for making time out uh, to speak with us. I don't think the president can lose. It's my pleasure. I don't think he can lose his grip on the government. It's just that we don't understand exactly what is going on. Stay with us, please. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and um, thank you very much for staying with us. And indeed, if you've just joined us, you're welcome. Uh, we're moving on to the second half now, and um, I guess we should move on to aviation, which is starting off from, from uh, that is the airspace within yeah, Nigeria yeah. is, is it's opening, opening up. Yeah, tomorrow, and um, Lara Afolayo was at the airport in Abuja. So we have a package from, okay. from her. Activities at this airport have been on hold since March, in line with the lockdown imposed by government. Local flight operations are now to begin once again, and a walk around the facility shows safety measures in place. These protocols will be enforced right from the drop-off zone. We are at the drop-off zone, so we expect that the passengers, once they are dropped off, they will come just like they are, fully kitted with their face masks on, and then we expect them to join the queue. We also encourage our passengers to buy their tickets online and to also check in online. And we also advise them to come three hours ahead of their flights. This is to factor in the fact that the pre-checks that we intend to do outside will take a bit of time. The floors are marked 1.5 meters apart. Hand washing devices and sanitizers are strategically stationed just outside the entrance. Temperatures are checked before any entry is made. And as one passes through the screening point, he meets with the profiling robots. If you are measuring temperature using the infrared uh, machine outside now, it will take you maybe 15 people in one minute. But with the robot, in one minute you can do 200 people. And about 15 people can be on a queue and it will measure the temperature simultaneously. If your mask is not properly fitted, it will tell you it's not properly fitted. You can also program it to go anywhere people are seated Go tell them about protocols on COVID. Ticketing and checking desks for the airlines have been shielded to prevent contact. There is also a lot of emphasis on distancing and use of face masks everywhere, from the passenger sitting area to the shuttle buses and up to the tarmac. The international wing has also been duly marked ahead of its reopening. These lawmakers who have come to assess the facility want the new protocols complied with by all passengers, regardless of their statuses. If you don't comply, FAN should be ready to report to the person to the authorities. They should also report to National Assembly. We'll make a case for them. They also believe losses incurred by the industry may have prompted the hike in fares. The local airlines are struggling to keep their staff. So I know definitely there will be... Just a little increase, there's no doubt about it. But what we are asking and what we are pleading is that let it not affect ordinary Nigerians. Airports in Port Harcourt, Oweri, Miduguri and Kanu are to begin operations three days after this airport resumes, while other airports in the country will reopen one week after. The authorities have yet to announce the date for the resumption of international flights. Lara Folayo, TVC News.
Abuja. So there we have it, mm -hmm. um, you know, laying it out. Um, still, no word yet for now on the international no, aspect not, of the aviation. But, I think it's but be August. Mm, mm, but uh, at least the country is opening up a, a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. We, uh, this is what we wanted, but um, with the safety measures being put in place. And I hope I don't that know our people will comply exactly, there. Exactly. Since they're not know, complying in first, the market, no, the thing is, I mean, the cities and first, in the towns. First, the BTF, they were saying something about AIDS, and ministers not taking AIDS. I tell, I bet you, by the time they start tomorrow, you will see AIDS, like 10 AIDS of one minister well, going to that airport. Ho hopefully And not. then from there, they will break all the protocols. Uh, no, no, uh, let's be No, it's, uh, no uh, because... Uh, don't, they, they, don't worry, we'll they see They were it. asking, the honorable there were asking that, look, make sure you report them even to us. So and, that we can take it off. And what do are they going to do? Are no, they going to arrest them? No. Uh, uh, they, they, well, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I like you. being realistic okay. here, you uh, know, because we they, have Mr. Lumide uh, <laughs> Owayo uh, with us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Owayo, uh, for making time to be with us. Um, well, your, your comments on the arrangements so far to start opening up uh, travel arrangements, especially with regard to air travel. Yeah, good morning. Uh, 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 good morning. Good morning. Yeah, well, um, the the government has taken its time uh, to come up with these procedures and guidelines in, in line with uh, what I, uh, I call IATA, ACI, and all other relevant international bodies have, um, have put in place as the guidelines for reopening. And um, it went to a, a, to a, a to come period whereby we we're, we're the airlines, the airport, the air service providers, air service providers, and every other person that has to do with operation had to go through training, meeting up with the guidelines. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> we finally met up with it. If you notice that we had to delay the opening, uh, where we were supposed to start on July 20th, but uh, so uh, sometime in June, and we could not make up. Uh, but but now we're we're ready to go. Uh, the, the the industry is ready, and uh, we are starting the op operation. Tomorrow, uh, you know, it's not all the airport that has started. Uh, we, are, we are starting about two airports, and in the next three days, what some airports will join, then the rest of the air airports will be open to the next week. And I know the whole world is waiting for the international flights mm -hmm. that will form. What we just they need to do now is to ensure that they, what the world we have a so quickly tomorrow, and uh, we can then uh, sustain it so that the international operations will start. Because uh, for the international operations to start, we must see a smooth operation at the, at the, mm -hmm. of the local road. It's, Indeed. It's just like it uh, maybe you'd like to bring up those concerns with Mr. Owaya. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was just concerned because, you know, the regular thing that we usually see in the airport is by the time a minister is going, traveling from maybe Abuja to Lagos, he will be coming with hordes of AIDS and all. Yes, we've heard that the PTA, but do you think this is going to be achievable, particularly in the next, maybe tomorrow or next or whatever, whatever time? I was, I was, I was hoping you would not repeat it. But I didn't tell you <laughs> at the time, just before I came on air, I was hoping you would not repeat it. That, that should be the I think I just have to deal with it now. But you, you, something for me was that when I first saw that order and it came from the minister, I said, mm, "That is where the law will probably be broken from." Uh, <laughs> we have, we have had it in the past. You remember when, when the, the Thomas Speaker Van Collins would he refused to be. To go to the airport, yeah, such yeah, uh, exactly. it, it, it's something that has lived with us in the Nigerian airspace. Uh, maybe for the first time, uh, they are they are not going to put the amount where the, where the, where the action is now and ensure that the, what they said will be the right thing. But I think it's most appropriate thing to do. Uh, we have to remove all those things that we've always looked, um, overlooked in the past. Alliance security men walking and with their girls on and the, all of that supporters coming in straight into the into the airport. Even some get to the town. Some some get straight to even. To the foot of the aircraft, and then uh, with this COVID now, the, the government has said this is the new the new normal. Mm -hmm. will not, in, in order to reduce the crowd at the time, in order mm -hmm. to save and, and 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 reduce the spread of this of this deadly virus, they mm -hmm. were are asking all uh, all their security aides and uh, friends and families to please stay away uh, from the airport vicinity. Now let, let us see how the, how the, uh, the, the it, it starts with the, those at the top. And like he said, he said it's only the Mr. President that is. There's going to be um, uh, that would not uh, be, uh, be, uh, be uh, that would, sorry that would be allowed to come in with a, with any 
any of his aid, but yes. any other person. Luckily, the Mr. President does not use our Air Force. He has his own. Yeah. So we want to see, we want to see it. But it, it will work once, once there's that will to, to achieve it. Indeed. Um, it, 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 it's, it's an important point because it will show, it will give some sort of an indication of, one, the discipline of mm -hmm. high government officials and um, the extent to which they want to be an example, uh, an exa you know, uh, leadership. Because, as you said, this is the new normal. So how well do these high officials, quite frankly, they have an onerous responsibility. They're just going to have to sacrifice, if that is the word. But since everybody is like looking at it as cans, we, uh, we know how our people are. No, we, this, this is a new normal, and I, I think they don't really have a choice. Touch wood, they will have to be uh, obedient to the exigencies of the time, I would imagine. Eh? Uh, so I'm even surprised that we're still expressing worry. Who does not know that these are not normal times? And so how can anybody feel he's that big of a man to breach these protocols? That's what gives some people hope. Uh, I hope you don't think it's misplaced. No, I don't. I don't. No, how, how, how would I think it's misplaced? I think it, it, it doesn't even help the industry. That by the time we return to the normal, normal, uh, we we'll sustain it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we don't really deserve having all those number of security men around. They, they are the ones that cause so much uh, issues for issues. normal passengers at the airport exactly. when they try to jump the queue, when they try to um, beat the process. And in, 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 in the end, you find people complain that uh, what is happening is this supposed to be an international airport. What is the norm? What is the standard? Do you see all the security men with other um, uh, top politicians and uh, government officials in other airports around the world? No. no. So if we if you are going to use the COVID period to restore normalcy, to, mm -hmm. to, to put us on par with our, our, our contemporaries, and I want to sustain on that climb. I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm in for it, and um, I, I wish we could sustain it. But like I said, the Minister of Ambition should show it, should, 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 should lead it. Want to see when they, when they come to the airport now? Uh, he will come in low, uh, take his bag and, and, and walk in. Uh, maybe that will help us reduce the error of having two or three, four, three to four uh, pilot vehicles moving along with them, uh, every government official. It will save it, it, it will save all. And I, and I see transcending to other sectors of the, of, of the of the economy and the country. And at the end of the day, we will all smile at reducing the cost of governance. Okay, I, I can see that. Um... We, they, they are really ready for, for to go tomorrow. Well, in terms of people are always complaining about touts. So how is how secure or how is the airport going to be secured? At least away from having touts mingling around, um, you know, the airports. You see, the, the, the issue of touts has been uh, historical with the with, with the airports. Remember, that predominantly most of the most of the so-called touts are always former airline and airport mm -hmm. employees. Having ID, to, having ID cards, still having the ID cards. Yes, you're having the ID card and, and what you're not. Now, with the new norm, now, what, 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 what the new norm, norm, norm is saying is it is only if you have your, your ticket with you and if you have a, 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 or, or your body pass that can enter into the terminal. That automatically takes care of the top. And uh, probably maybe the best they will get to is uh, maybe getting close to the, to the canopies. And I'm sure, what, well, uh, like I said, the canopies will be, will be for those who are waiting to enter the airport itself. So the the, 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 the tops this time around mm -hmm. will have it up both um, uh, at the airports, uh, Lagos in particular, where they are known for their for their for the for their users. And I uh, and I, I just hope with, with, with that we're able to move forward from there and ensure that we educate those tops because the tops are contributed to the high uh, cost of tickets in, uh, on some of those um, um routes that uh, uh, flights are limited um, by virtue of coming to one ticket and uh, pretending to be buying tickets ahead of, of their of, of their passengers when what when I told they're actually holding those tickets. I think these two should take care of the tasks and uh, not only the tasks, then those uh, taxi uh, airport taxi drivers that loiter around the mm, airport exactly uh, uh, for both baggage and uh, and uh, travelers. All this I, 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 I think they are prepared prepared for this the industry is ready for this and finally taking the lead this time around. Okay talking about tickets uh, what should an average um, passenger be looking at <laughs> now you know before it was between um, twenty-five thousand for economy, then maybe about forty to forty thousand or so for for business class. So, what are we looking at, and what percentage increase was was made or has been made by the um, airlines? Yeah, I think that we are looking at about maybe about eighty to ninety percent. Wow. So we are looking at we are getting the ticket now for 
cheapest ticket of around forty to fifty thousand naira. Okay. For economy. You know, the, the, the economy. While the business class is give about over a hundred. That's uh, that's what the new fare will look like. But I I I I I, I, but I, I look at when when when, you, when, but when the air, the other airports are open, and you know at, at the moment it's not all the aircraft and crew mm -hmm. that are starting now. So we're just they're, they're, they're limited to the number of um, to, to this number of routes and the, uh, the, those who are going to approve. Her. So mm -hmm. as as we move on and maybe in the next two three three weeks when we have more aircraft, more routes, and more of the operational staff to be back online, you expect the fare to drop a bit. But definitely mm -hmm. not to the level that it was before the uh, before COVID. Because the <clears throat> aviation sector has been particularly hard hit uh, in, in this in this COVID dispensation. Um, exactly. I, I, they, I, one doesn't really know how how they can run at a profit anymore. Exactly. Uh, if they're not laying off people, uh, because that would be in tandem with what's going on around the world. So uh, this is something of a costly exercise. And um, it's part, just part of opening up the society, but I, I, people, are experts are saying that um, it simply isn't profitable uh, to fly. But we must give the semblance, the appearance of at least beginning the opening up of a society, right? Yes. Yes, we, 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 cannot, uh, we cannot hold ourselves down. Um, it, it's it's uh, abnormal to start talking about profitability at the moment. What we can only talk about is just... The, uh, just to restart our operations to, to ensure that we don't we do not lose more mm -hmm. or, or, or increase our losses. So it's, it, the, the idea of opening now, now is to open the economy, let the economy start building. Let us mitigate the losses in aviation industry, not to make profit, but not to break profit, or even talking about uh, uh, breaking even, but just to mitigate the losses uh, that we have at hand. You know, we I, 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 so this basic, let us start let's see as the operation encourage passengers to come back on board. And as we encourage passengers to come back, but once the passengers begin to increase, frequency begin to increase, now we cannot be talking about increase in um, in, uh, in in revenue coming in. Then you start begin to look at, look at whether we are, we are getting to the break even point, mm -hmm. or then what you are talking about profitability. But profitability for now it's uh, out of the question. Remember, the industry is what well, 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 the house is the worst hit in this COVID era, and as up to today, the the industry, the industry went patiently, patiently, and I'm waiting. The palliatives promised by the federal government of Nigeria that mm. has not been, that has not been touched by the industry. So, if 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 the palliative does not come in terms of survival, are, are you looking at um, some of the airlines merging, you know, and in, in future? We cannot, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot stand in isolation. It is happening all over the world. Mm. Airlines are retrenching them. Some are merging. Some are, are, are simply going to go under. As some are even are, are being are taken over by the government uh, of the country by, by increasing their share of this and them. So we, we cannot be different. If we if these politics don't come, uh, I, you, you, you might see some of the airlines uh, having to um, still um, go into a merger, um, run into go into partnership, and probably some will just probably just quietly quietly uh, uh, fade out of the scene. Uh, 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 what what is the percentage uh, that they are allowed? The percentage uh, capacity load that they are allowed uh, as they begin to fly. Well, that 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 that, 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 was, that, was, that, that was a big issue within the industry because uh, there were those who wanted the the middle seat to be cut to be cut of the cut of, to to be left open. Mm -hmm. There are those who wanted the certain percentage, but the we we have looked at it and looked at the the, the safety and health uh, guidance put in place, and they said in order not to cause more discomfort both to the airlines who will now be losing more money and the passengers who will not be able to pay for the what if when you ask them to take those, not to not to put passengers on those seats who's gonna pay for those seats mm. and it's the passengers and when you ask the passengers to pay you are, you are already talking about 50 to 100 k if you now take those ones those seats off you're looking about about the hundred and look at the minimum ticket to be about hundred and twenty thousand and uh, two hundred thousand for the business class so who's gonna pay who's gonna fly so uh, what what they might do is to take care of the guidelines uh, ensure that, that everybody have their, their face, face mask on. Uh, the, the testing, the sanitize, the sanitizers. No more. There will be no in-flight in uh, uh, kitchen, kitchen services. The only place that will be left open now are the last row of seats that will be used as isolation points on body aircraft. Okay, because wow. um, it, it's a challenge to fly. I, I, I was going to ask. Well, you being an aviation analyst and all of that, uh, I don't imagine you'll be advising people not to fly. But I was going to ask the question: mm. How wise, how safe it is to fly? 
um, especially with the uh, what experts are telling us that most of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria are asymptomatic. So a person could board a flight not looking one bit ill, um, but as we have been told, they still are able to transmit the virus. Uh, it's, it's, it's a problem. Would you advise everybody who, who used to be a, a flyer to continue to fly? Or if people can make the sacrifice of going with the long-form journey of um, road transportation, if possible? Look, uh, uh, Yuri, the truth is air transport remains the safest mode of transportation in the, in the country and in the industry worldwide. Indeed of traveling, the... yes. But indeed of... A danger to personal health. And please hold on for a while. Let me bring in Bayo, who I understand has called in. Uh, forgive me. Uh, good morning, uh, Bayo. Good morning, sir. From Ijebode. Quick yes, question, sir. please. The reopening of airports is just like playing hide and seek with the devil. It's dangerous. Then it's, it's when you start seeing the, the, the races increasing every day. So uh, it's I would advise them not to open the airport yet, sir. It's very, very okay, dangerous. thank you very much, Bayo. Appreciate it. Thank you for keeping it that short and sharp. Uh, Olumide, coming back to you, you know, I was making the point about the, 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 the challenge of most, most COVID cases, COVID-19 cases, being asymptomatic, meaning it doesn't show. Uh, they still are, nevertheless, live in terms of transmitting diseases. You were going to comment before you gave us room for that quote. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my comment is, I, 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 I understand the emotions, considering that uh, by, it is alleged that they, it came into the country through air transport, and then uh, uh, it was air transport that took it around the world from the source of uh, the, the, the pandemic. Um, well, now that the, uh, the industry is alert now, they have put measures in place to ensure that all passengers that come on board, not even come on board, that come even into the airports, right from the airport, are, are, are safe from this pandemic. So there will be a lot of tests um, before you come in, checks on, on your health, uh, on, on your on, on your status. There, there, there will be sanitizer, disinfectant. All these are put in place. And when you go, you may get to the airport environment, environment. Your mask is non negotiable once you get on board. And the aircraft is said it's going to be disinfected regularly. So it's, it's not as if you are, it's not like before that, okay, after, after, at the end of the day, when you pack the aircraft, that's where you clean. But at every, almost every 30 minutes, and the air you have there is it's typically called the air, 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 air and you see the, the, that, that, that air comes in vertically. It goes down and goes and you start cleaning and comes back. So it's not like it has a permanent one that goes around, that goes around the cabin. You know, and again, if, if you look at the passengers in the, in, in the aircraft, they are forward facing. All they're right. Not person, not, Indeed. They're not, they're not person in order. Uh, so uh, if, if uh, 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 forgive me, for, by, forgive me, Olumide. I, I got to interrupt you, but I, I want to thank you very much for making the time uh, to be with us. Thank you very much, uh, you know, for you know giving us the benefit of uh, your insight on this matter. Uh, but just before we go, uh, I think. Um, uh, yeah, there's a breaking news. Yeah, could you just uh, pick up the phone and read it? Yeah, they just we just heard that um, Ibrahim Magu is at the venue of the panel sitting, and he has um, 22 allegations that were made against him. Those are the allegations against him, and Ibrahim Magu's lawyer have prepared their, their defense and are confident that there is no basis for these allegations. And um, we also have it that he has prepared all the documents to debunk these allegations and contrary to the claim of, the, of Malamu, Magu has never sold any property to anybody. The only thing he did is to hand over the forfeited properties to the F uh, federal government's MDAs as offices, thereby saving federal government from paying billions of naira as rents for these MDAs. This action or sequel to okay. the approval. Of I'm, I'm sure the details will come. So the on details will. On. We, that, that, we are going that, to be that, that on this matter released. all through. Who, who, who offered that statement? This this is from our source from the panel. Okay, okay, uh, okay because it sounds like an EFCC statement. Yes, yes, this is an EFCC statement. Ah, ah, so okay, so we just want to we'll be updating Nigerians Indeed. on what is happening so at the panel. Stay very close to TVC News, uh, as you know, you hear a much fuller version of that uh, very, very shortly. So that's our program. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us uh, throughout. And um, at, on behalf of Asukwa James, and indeed thanking uh, Larry Suraj and Mr. Uh, Omwayo. Uh, stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing.